I'm going to read this story. It's, uh, it's called A Butch Roadmap. A couple of months back, I came upon an article in the online version of Extra. It's of Canada's kind of queer magazine entitled Winnipeg Pride Wants Parade to be Family Friendly. In the article, the then chair of last year's Pride Parade was quoted as saying, we have to remember that this is a public event. Part of the parade is to show people we're not extremists. When pressed to explain just what she meant by extremists, she responded, drag queens and butch women. She then added, it was important to show the people of Winnipeg that there are mainstream queer community members too, like lawyers and doctors. Now I'm Canadian, so uh, this meant I was so mad I seriously considered writing a stern letter. <laughs> the subtext of her words stung my eyes and burned in my throat. Apparently, According to this fucking genius, regardless of my politics or my attitude or tactics, I was an extremist by virtue only of my appearance. Nothing of who I was or what I might contribute to my community mattered because of what I looked like. And in order to be acceptable to the good citizens of Winnipeg, we needed to put forward a more mainstream face to the general public, liberally laced with professionals. <laughs> and I wondered how this line of reasoning was going to go over with the many perverted transsexual leather dyke lawyers from working class backgrounds, I am lucky enough to know. <laughs> and apparently this woman hadn't read that part of queer history where drag queens and butches started the whole fucking thing by finally standing up and rioting in response to police persecution and brutality. And now, she didn't want us at her parade anymore. We weren't family friendly enough. And then I wondered what exactly this meant for those of us with families. Then just recently, I heard a rumor that the younger queers don't like the word butch anymore. And this makes me wonder if uh, I were 20 years old again instead of 40, what would I call myself? I grew up without a road map to myself. Nobody taught me how to be a butch. I didn't even hear the word until I was about 25 years old. I, I first became something I had no name for in solitude, and only later discovered the word for what I was, and realized there were others like me. So uh, now I am writing myself down, sketching directions, so that I can be found or followed if the word for you is butch, remember this word. It will be used against you. If the word for you is butch, then your history is one of strength and survival and uh, largely silent. Do not hide this word under your tongue. Do not whisper it or sweep it under the basement stairs. Let it uh, fill up your chest and widen your shoulders. Wear it like a sleeve tattoo, like a medal of valor. Learn to recognize other butches for what they really are, your people your brothers, or your sisters. You see, both are just words that mean family. Other butches are not your competition. They are your comrades. Be there when they need you. Go fishing together. 
help each other move. And move. <laughs> and move. And move. <laughs> Polish your rims or your chrome or your boots or your knobs together. <laughs> See these acts for what they really are. Solidarity. Do not give your butch friend a hard time about having a ponytail or a Pekingese Pomeranian cross <laughs> or nail polish or even a fucking smart car. <laughs> Get over yourself. You are a rare species, not a stereotype. Trim your nails short enough that you could safely insert your fingers into your own vagina, <laughs> should you ever want to. <laughs> Scars and purple thumbnails are a status symbol. When attempting to operate, maintain, or repair anything mechanical, always remember the words of my grandmother. The vast majority of machines are still designed, built, driven, and fixed by men. Therefore, they cannot be that complicated. <laughs> be exceptionally nice to little old ladies. They really need their faith in the youth of today restored. And they might think that you're the youth of today. Let them butt in line at the Safeway. Slow down and walk with them at crosswalks so they're not the only ones holding up traffic. Drive your grandmother to bingo. Shovel her driveway. Let chivalry not be dead. Misogyny, we can do away with, but chivalry? If you're going to be the kind of butch who is often read as a man or a boy, then be the kind of man or boy you wish you would have slept with in high school. <laughs> be a gentleman. Let her finish her sentence. Share the armrest. Do her laundry without shrinking anything this time. <laughs> Buy her her very own cordless drill. Open doors for gigantic bodybuilding men and say things like, here, let me get that for you. <laughs> Carry a pocket knife, a lighter, and a handkerchief on your person at all times. Learn flashy, lighter tricks, how to tie a half hitch, a slip knot, and a double Windsor. Learn how to start a fire with a flint and some dry moss, and then forevermore use lighter fluid or gasoline and a blowtorch. <laughs> Burn most of your eyebrows off lighting the barbecue with a birthday candle and then tell everybody all about it. <laughs> Wear footwear. That makes a clomping sound as opposed to a tick or a swish. Let the weird hairs on your chin and around your nipples grow unhindered. <laughs> Learn how to quilt, crochet, or hook rugs. Women appreciate a fellow who isn't afraid of their feminine side. Practice saying you're sorry, however you people say it, I don't know. Um, <laughs> This is one, practice saying your story, this is one activity where you should not use your father as a role model. Fonzie was a fucking asshole. And if you are too young to remember who the Fonz was, YouTube it. Locker room talk? No, man. A surefire way not to get laid a second time. Sleep around, this time without feeling guilty.